Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just want to say thank you so much for joining us in worship. Praise God. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. I just want to say thank you once again for just keeping God first, focusing on what God is doing right now in your life. Isn't that so amazing that Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, is listening to every word. Hallelujah. And through the anointing power that is in you, God is saying, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name that God blesses us with a fresh anointing from heaven. Amen. Listen, we come to God boldly through Christ our Lord. For God is worthy to be praised. Can I get a hallelujah? So I'm just so excited and thank you so much. We moved the camera around. For those of you who are wondering, um, just got some feedback as far as uh, um, keeping things a little closer. So I pray that this blesses you as far as you'll be able to follow in the worship service. If not, I will follow up later on and upload the PowerPoint JPEG files on uh, Facebook and on the website as well. Our website is oacchurch.com. Once again, that's oacchurch.com. We also have an offering tab for those of you who feel led. And if this is your home church, please, all the churches in America need your help. Amen. And of course, I know who I'm talking to. Praise the Lord. I am a pastor of the, the most generous, most awesome, most anointed, most favorite church in all of the world. Hallelujah. Open Arms Community Church. And I'm just so thankful to be pastoring God's holy church. Amen. And you know I fear God with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I love Him with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Uh, this is all I want. Amen. All I want to do is just worship. Hallelujah. And I know for all of eternity, we will be worshiping. And I'm just so thankful that I'm with brothers and sisters that choose, I'm going to do it now. Hallelujah. And glory to God. And once again, that's just me, just, just, just agape. Hallelujah. Just showing you my heart that all, all your church, all, all your churches need your help. Above all, let's give God what's God's. Amen. You cannot outgive our Heavenly Father. Look at the cross, right? Look at Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God didn't hold anything back from us. He put it all on the cross for us. Amen. And God is saying, just, just give. Give and I will give you seed to sow. Hallelujah. So once again, thank you so much for your gift, your generous gift of offering. You can go to our website at OA ccchurch.com and there's an offering tab right there and uh, we accept PayPal and all kinds of credit cards and remember it's all because of the fact that we're in this climate right now of all that's going on and we just want to be a blessing to you we never want to rob any worship from God hear me when I say that now church I don't want to ever rob God from any worship and yes giving financially it is a form of worship. So I pray in Jesus' name that you'll find it in your heart to just sow into your church, Open Arms Community Church. And if this isn't your church, please, in the name of Jesus, pray. Pray. Ask Holy Spirit. And God will lead you to, to, to give his money back into the kingdom so he can provide you with more seeds to sow. In Jesus' name. Do you receive that? Amen. I'm, I'm excited. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Amen. Rejoice. God is on our side. He is for us. He is head over heels in love with us. Amen. There is no weapon. Satan himself cannot touch you because of the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get a hallelujah? Amen. Glory to God. Our worship service this morning, amen, is going to be exposing the thief and his deceptions. I exaggerate the this morning part because I'm getting into the habit of saying tonight. And you may find that later on. I may say tonight. Hallelujah, it doesn't matter. It's tonight somewhere around the world. Amen. And so we're going to we're going to expose this enemy and his deceptions. Now before we get into that, I want to show you the books that we're going to be into. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23, one of my favorite scriptures in the word. Romans 13, 1 through 5. And Ephesians 6. And I believe we're in Ephesians 6 we're going to be in verse 12, starting in verse 12 and Romans 14. Verses 16 through 22. Hallelujah. So we got, a, we got a bunch to go through. Praise the Lord. Are you excited? I'm excited. Amen. Holy Spirit is our teacher and I'm just so excited. His anointing is within us. You have Jesus Christ as Lord. Every soul who has Jesus Christ as Lord. Hallelujah. God lives in and through. He dwells in you. The Word of God says Holy Spirit lives in you. And in Jesus name I pray that God blesses you with a fresh anointing from heaven. Hallelujah. Fresh wisdom. I would rather have God's wisdom 
right? I would rather have God's wisdom than, than any, any mind on the earth. I mean, truly now, right? And so I'm just so excited that God says, you ask for wisdom, and I will give it to you freely. Amen? So let's ask God for wisdom and prayer. Let's go to his throne boldly. Hallelujah. Pray with me. And please, family, pray for me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Father. I am not worthy to be standing here, Father God. I am so thankful that, Lord Jesus Christ, you are the only one worthy. You are worthy of all the praise, all the glory, Father God. You are God Almighty. And Lord Jesus Christ, as I lift up your name and I plead your holy blood, Father God, over myself, over my family, over your church family, Father God, over your entire church body, Father. I just thank you so much right now, Father God, that you've given us, through Christ our Lord, the ability, the anointing to speak life. And Heavenly Father, I thank you right now that as you expose the evil one, Father God, that you also equip us, you equip us, Father God, with the tools necessary to extinguish the darts of the enemy, to cut the head off, Father God, with your mighty sword through Christ our Lord. So Holy Spirit, we call upon you. Holy Spirit, you are our God, you are the only teacher. Father, we don't go through any man, we don't put anybody on the pedestal, Father God. It's all you, Lord Jesus Christ, and only you, for you are the only way, the truth, and the life. And Lord Jesus Christ, as we lift up your name, Father, forgive us. Father, I am sorry of anything that I have done or said to displease you, Father. I am sorry of any thoughts, Father God, that I entertained in your temple. And Father, right now, in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, I surrender and I submit it all to you, Father. And Father, and I pray that this word that you have for us, in exposing the enemy and his, de his deceptions, Father, that I pray that it falls upon ears that have ears to hear. And Father God, for those who have eyes, that scales will be removed off their eyes so that they can see, Father God. They can see the enemy's plots. And hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ, thank you that your light, the Holy Spirit, shines through us and you expose every, every plot of the enemy. And Heavenly Father, thank you that you have the plan for you are God alone. That you're the only one that has a plan over our lives. And that the enemy, Father God, all he has is distractions. And I thank you, Father, for this life-changing revelation. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Exposing the thief and his deceptions. Hallelujah. Romans 13, 1 says, let everyone. Last time I checked in the word of God, when the Bible says let everyone, that's everybody. Amen. That, that doesn't exclude anybody. It's everybody. Say it with me. Everybody. Hallelujah. Everybody. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Hallelujah. So we're going to go slow and we're going to be, just be obedient to what the anointing of God wants us to do and Holy Spirit will teach, amen, and to give us life-changing revelation. But right there, just right, right, right out the jump, you notice the Holy Spirit is teaching us right now. That the day when, that glorious day, that day when you cried out to Lord Jesus Christ, remember, we just covered this. God wants to take us back to that very moment, hallelujah. And I pray in Jesus' name that we stay in this moment. We stay right there. As a child crying out to the perfect father, save me. Help me, Lord. Protect me, Father. Whatever it is that you, beloved, that you cried out to God Almighty, you said, Lord Jesus, forgive me. However you said it, guess what? It was the perfect prayer. Isn't that incredible? That of all the millions of millions of all the children of God, everyone has their own way of crying out to God Almighty, and everyone was perfect. Hallelujah. Come on, agape. Amen. Every child that cried out to God, regardless what dialect, regardless how many scriptures they know, did it matter, family? Did it matter that they didn't go to seminary? Did it matter that they had all these degrees? Did it matter how much money was in the bank? Did it matter what sins they were committing at that time? No, that prayer was perfect and touched heaven to the point where Lord Jesus
Jesus said, you are mine. Reached into hell. Hallelujah. You are mine. I put you right here. Hallelujah. And right now God is saying, let everyone remind my church. Remind this world. Everyone. That's everybody. Hallelujah. Say it with me again. It feels so good. Everybody. Everybody has to be subjected to the governing authorities. God says right here, right off the bat, if you are mine, you will submit. You see that word right there, oh my goodness, carries such heavy weight if used in religion. However, however, when you use this word as far as submission in a relationship with Lord Jesus Christ and submitting to the Holy One, Holy Spirit in us, Get ready because your life is going to get gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen? And so God once again reinforces the fact that even though there's governing authorities that you may not agree with, God says, I put them there. Let's repeat it. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Hallelujah. Verse 2, consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Remember the title, beloved. This title is exposing the enemy and his deceptions. This is one of the greatest deceptions of the evil one. For you to get so caught up in all the chaos, in all the opinions, in all the crunchiness of this world, to get caught up and adopt into your heart, into the Holy of Holies, and start speaking against authorities and actually acting out. And here is God saying, if you do that, if you rebel against the authority, you will bring judgment on yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord, I don't want nobody judging me. I don't want to heap any judgment on me. I don't want to judge nobody. Why? Because my Lord Jesus Christ is the only judge. Can I get an amen? And because we love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Come on now. Because we love God with everything, should we not submit everything? And glory to God, we're going to get deeper into this right now, as you see on this screen. I ask Holy Spirit, how do you want me to deliver this message? Because yes, it's deep. Yes, it's deep. And God says, stop limiting me and telling me how deep this message is. It's my message. And I said, Father, forgive me. Everything is yours. You're the teacher. Oh, Father, I just want to make sure that I deliver it in obedience to what you once said. Never anything about joy. Rebuke Joey. I'm just a mouthpiece. Hallelujah. We're all mouthpieces for the Lord. Amen. If you have Jesus Christ as Lord, Holy Spirit will activate every gift from heaven in you. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful to be surrounded by worshipers that worship God in spirit and truth. And so God says, I want you to use yourself as an example. And I want you to put that up there and show what a rebel is. I said, okay, Lord, I'll do it. So praise God. Here you go. You got me. There's my Bible, hallelujah. And let's look into what a rebel is. First things first, because we are going to be spending quite some time in this. It might not be today, it might be in the next week. I don't know, the Holy Spirit said so, hallelujah. You look at this, this is our three-part B. Can I get an amen? And you guys know, hallelujah, for those of you who are planted here that this is your home, praise God, you know, I have a soul, that's your mind, amen? I have a spirit, amen? The Holy of Holies, amen? And I have this flesh, right? This flesh. I know many of you at home said this is the body of Lord Jesus Christ. Don't jump ahead, <laughs> amen? I know the Holy Spirit's already telling you everything. Hallelujah. So check this out. This is what God wanted to show us. Soul, spirit, and this is the flesh that we just discussed. Praise God. Now when we talk about being a rebel, I need you to understand what Holy Spirit is trying to plant within us to expose the enemy. And remember, sometimes when God plants a seed in our heart, sometimes it hurts. 
I'm just being honest with you. Because I've been through it. Amen? Still go through it daily. Crucifying this flesh. Amen? Crucifying these thoughts. Hear something. See something. Not supposed to. Immediately go into the throne of God. Father, forgive me. I don't want to think this thing. I don't want to hear this thing, Father God. I don't want to speak or act this way. Guess what? For those of you who know that go through repentance, it hurts. But the glory of God is that's just for a moment. Amen? It's just for a moment. And in that little moment, God sees your sacrifice. Amen? God sees you laying it down at his altar. And Holy Spirit says, well done, my faithful servant. And he ignites a fire in you, right? Well, when you talk about being rebellious or rebels, right, as we got up here on the screen, what fuels that temporary passion of satisfaction of the flesh is pride. And let me explain this pride, praise God. If you see here on the soul section, and it may be too small to read, and praise God, we're going to have it up on the screen later. I'm going to read it so that you can follow with me. Underneath soul, if rebellion is the fruit that is exposed, that God says, I need to get rid of that, what happens is, is there's anger, pride, hurt. Come on now. It's all about I'm, I'm, I'm. There's confusion, judgment. There's also being very opinionated, critical emotions, my thoughts, torment, worry, fear, insecurity, straight up crunching. That's the last word right there. Crunching. And all of this has to do with what's going on in the soul. The thoughts. Why? Because the enemy triggered something. Uh, maybe it's an insecurity. Right? Maybe it could be a something as simple as, I don't like what that person said. Right? And guess what? You just keep repeating it in your mind. And as you keep repeating it, what does it do? Now it starts to feel anger and frustration and I need to do something about it, right? Over here on the right on spirit, what does it do to the spirit man on the inside of you? Because remember, let's repeat this. You have a soul man, a spirit man, and a fleshly man, amen? That's the three-part being of every soul that's living on the world. This is who we are. And in the spirit, you have addiction, emotion, you start getting sensitive, right? You start getting fearful, defeated, lost, sick, mad, sad. Sum it all up, crunchy. Right? Just say it with me. Don't be crunchy. Amen? Don't be crunchy. But this is what happens when the mind infiltrates the spirit. The thoughts, the enemy's voice, the circumstance, the condition, the environment, right? Starts applying stress and pressure over a beloved child of God and the enemy's hoping rather than calling on the name above every name Lord Jesus Christ right that you go ahead and you get quiet and you just start meditating on things that you shouldn't be meditating on right all of this this is what takes place in the flesh crunchy double minded unstable you start to grumble you start to gossip it's all about self righteousness prideful you get religious, and guess what? Self-destruct. Self-destruct. It's moments like this that I want to tell you, and I'm going to be up front because I've been there, so I'm just throwing myself under the bus like I do many, many times. And if you join me, then just hear what I'm saying. But you can get into a season through disobedience that you, you finally find yourself in this pig pen, and then you start saying, God, why didn't you let me? Mm. Why God? But family, this is the moment right now that God says we need to reset. Don't you agree? Look at the world. Rather than talking about all this craziness, why don't we just face the fact that we need you, Lord Jesus. God, forgive us. I plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God that we have all this time now. People getting out of work, children already out of school, right? Everything just stopped. But the question is, is what are we doing on this downtime? Are we just fueling the rebellious pride and going along with the world and just looking through social media and all the garbage? Or are you saying, you know what, enough? 
enough of social media, enough of the internet, enough of all this stuff. Kids, we're home now. We are going to crack open this Bible. And we're going to get into the word of God. And we're going to plead the blood of Jesus. We're going to cry out to Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Get some oil. Family, listen right now. Many of you know this. Get some oil. You may not have oil from Israel. It doesn't matter where it's from. Get some olive oil, vegetable oil. Get some Crisco. God knows your heart. But in the name of Jesus, bless the oil and say, Father, this is your holy blood. Lord Jesus, help me. I'm going to take this oil and I'm going to anoint myself. I'm going to anoint my family. I'm going to anoint my pets. I'm going to anoint the house. And in the name of Jesus, I'm just going to march and walk and say, thank you, Father God. That all your angels are around me, fighting for me, Father. This is the truth, family. You want to experience the breakthrough? You want to see Holy Spirit? Hallelujah! Flow through you like never before? In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord, Holy Spirit says, do it. Anoint yourself in oil. It's time, family. Men, it's time to be men. Women of God, beloved daughters, it's time to be daughters of God. Come on now. We are children of God. Rather than pointing and looking at each other and criticizing one another and talking about who's doing this, what's it, forget it. Because last time I checked at the end of the day, when the glorious trumpet goes off, you are the only one standing before Lord Jesus. Ain't no opinions going to matter. It don't matter what denomination you're from. It don't matter how long you've been a Christian. All that matters is, does Lord Jesus Christ know you? Does he know you? I've had so many conversations this week, talking about, oh, I've been a Christian. All I ask people, I, I don't judge nobody. I just say it out of love. Does he know you? Huh? Well, what do you mean? You know Jesus. I know you know Jesus. You said it. But does Lord Jesus Christ know you? Because that's what matters. That's what matters. And I pray in Jesus' name that that right there, oh my goodness, that the anointing is just flooding people's heart. I mean, Father, I've been claiming I know you. But truly, now that I examine, do you know me? Even the devils, even the devils right now, even the ones that are in torture right now, in Haiti, on fire, just, just excruciating pain, they know who Jesus is. So let's not rebel. Let's not rebel. Because this rebelliousness comes straight from the enemy. Because was it not Lucifer that rebelled against God in pride and said, I can do this? I'll do it better? And guess what? It wasn't only Lucifer. A third of the angels fell with him. Meaning, meaning that it's very, very important as children of God that we focus on our own relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I said relationship. Relationship is not religion. Relationship is not coming to a building and acting the part, singing songs, and listening to some guy talk. Relationship is having conversations with God Almighty through Christ our Lord. His name is Holy Spirit. Say his name with me, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it again, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you. So as we continue this, this is how you look when you're rebellious. Look at that crunchy face. I rebuke them. I don't ever want. I don't. You know how stressful and how, how annoying that is? Even when I do it right now, and I'm just, praise God, I'm just trying to make you laugh. Hallelujah. I know you know that, but man, it takes a lot of work to look like this. But check this out. Oh, man. Hallelujah. It's amazing because. Just by changing my facial expression, hallelujah, you just feel, just, you just feel, just do that with me at home, hallelujah, do that with me at home, praise God. Last time I checked, when you, when you fly, right, you can't, I don't even think they got birds that look like that, do you? Birds that fly, I think all birds are like, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> 
sorry. Verse 3. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the ones in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. Hallelujah. God is saying, be obedient and submissive, and I will bless you and anoint you. Would you rather, listen, let, let's, just, let's just summarize what we've gone through so far. Okay, verse 1, 2, and 3. Let's just summarize it real quick. Would you rather you do it on your own and prove to everybody what you know or what you're capable of or your gifts or talents or your opinion and how much better or gooder you can do it? Because you know it's not gooder because it's you, so it's not going to be gooder because God is only one good. That's why we say gooder and gooder. It's all Lord Jesus Christ. Or, or, and this is the thing that hurts. Will you finally say, just like on that glorious day when we received Lord Jesus Christ, whenever that was, right? On that glorious day when you said, I need you, Lord. You are my Lord and my Savior. Amen? And see, so God is asking that right now because when you do what is right, you will be commended. And hallelujah, I know who I'm talking to. Praise the Lord. You have Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Guess what? God said, well done. Well done. Now, here comes accountability in your relationship with God Almighty. Are you going to be accountable? Are you going to have a relationship with God? Or are you going to say, huh, I got the stamp. Look, I got the stamp. Jesus is my Lord. And off you go. See, it was never intended to be that way. What Lord Jesus Christ done did is he paid for souls that actually want the Father. And these souls that want the Father, yes, you, hallelujah, me, praise God, Holy Spirit says, hallelujah, I'm going to do a mighty work through my church. That's all of God's beloved people now, amen? Praise God. Let's move on. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Verse 5, therefore, it's therefore reason, hallelujah. It is necessary to, say this word with me, submit. Submit. Mm. Remember. There's many of us right now. I want to tell you and confess to you. I hated this word submit because for so long in my Christianity, I, it was put on me as control. And when I say control, it was, it, it, it was you submit because you don't know what you're talking about. You don't, you submit because and it was never about teaching through Holy Spirit that when you submit, you allow God to be teacher. You allow God to take control of the entire temple. You allow God to take the sickness. You allow God to take the depression, the anxiety. See, the submit is just surrendering, surrendering every thought, every feeling, every emotion. Listen, church family, I know it's gonna hurt because sometimes you could say, listen, I don't feel the healing but yet, you're telling me to submit, and I think I submitted, but I'm still in this pain. Listen, it's continuously submitting and thanking God that it is already done. This is where God wants us, as far as his church, to submit, to allow him to do the mighty work that Lord Jesus Christ already completed. You see, every good and perfect thing that you are praying for, that you are focusing on, that you are anticipating, everything, it's already paid for and done. But when we don't submit to Holy Spirit, we get anxious. And it's in that anxiety that we step out of the will of God. And it prolongs the blessings that are already chasing us down. The reason why it's prolonged, as, as we discussed just in the last worship service, is because we veered off. And our Heavenly Father's going, I'm here. I'm here. When you're done, I'm here. And let's go. 
when you're done. Because remember, God will not push himself on you. And like I said, religion teaches this word submit as a control. A man controlling, like a Pharisee or Sadducee. Putting control, putting fear on people. Listen, we don't fear anyone but God alone. Can I get a hallelujah? Give God praise, amen? We only fear God Almighty. And what is this fear? Agape. It's how much He loves us. When you know that God loves you this much, you know, I need to submit, right? I love it so much when I just have conversations, a lot of our church family. You know, and, and I love this part when, when somebody says, you know, the other day something happened and something almost came out of my mouth, but in the middle of the pain, and I usually say something bad, Holy Spirit says, oh, isn't that sweet? Hallelujah. God goes, oh. And what's so sweet, it's not just one testimony. It's not just two. It's not just 10, 20. I'm talking about hundreds of testimonies. Of how intimate Holy Spirit is when we live this life of submission to Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. And this is what God wanted to show about this word conscience. This right here is embedded in our, say it with me, soul. Now remember, there is a war taking place in the heavenly realm for your soul, for my soul. But by the grace of God, we are saved through the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are eternal beings. Amen. We're not part of this world. We are part of heaven. Amen. And Holy Spirit dwells and lives on the inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We rejoice. Rejoice. We are so thankful. Amen. Glory to God. And when we live this way, we know that this is not our world. So guess what? The continuous refreshing of the soul is this submission. Why is it important to submit and to be obedient to what God put in place? It's because Holy Spirit is peace. He is the God of peace. And Holy Spirit is not a part of chaos. He's not a part of drama. He's not. He has nothing to do with that. God is a God of order. He's a God of agape. He's a God of peace. And when we know how to submit and live life this way, guess what God does? Our conscience, our soul, is continuously renewed. Amen? Romans 12. Renewed mind. Amen? We don't conform to the way the world's acting. We don't conform to the way people think or this world thinks. We don't. People even closest to you go, man, what's wrong with you? Aren't you worried? No. Why not? Jesus is my Lord. I, I know you see me here and I'm breathing, but I'm up there. And I know God got me. Hallelujah. And I love it because when you know that your conscience is clean, because of the fact that you're submitting everything. Listen, family, this applies to anything. Hallelujah. I know many of you watching right now, you said, oh man, I knew you were going to go there. Amen. You're right. Holy Spirit done told you. Are you. Do you have a guilty conscience of something that you did in the past that maybe you haven't brought to the altar of God? I ask you, will you bring that to the altar today? Brother Joe, you don't know. I'm in my house. I'm in my vehicle. I, you don't know where I'm at. Just, it don't matter. It can be in a parking lot. Re remember, the altar is the altar of your heart. Hallelujah. But that's between you and Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit may tell you, get down right now. On your knees, on your face, in the living room. Maybe right now, as, as this message is playing, Holy Spirit is telling you, give it to me. Watch what I'm going to do. Just give it to me. Drop on your knees. Give it to me. Hallelujah. Just drop. Praise God. I don't care if you don't see me right now on the screen. It doesn't matter. And you just drop on your knees. and Holy Spirit, I, just, I want to submit everything to you, Father. Father God, in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, whatever that is going on in my life that... Whether it's in pride or just complete rebelliousness or disobedience, Father. Father, me, Joey Corrected, Father, your son. Please, Father, forgive me. Heavenly Father, I know that I'm forgiven. I know that I am because, Lord Jesus Christ, you're my Lord. You're my Savior. You died for my sins, past, present, and future. But, Father, I, I 
refuse to be that child to just say, well, because you did that, I don't have to. I know, Holy Spirit, that you are the God of peace. And Father God, right now, examine me, O oh Lord. Change me, Father. Be everything, Father God, that you have created for me to be. Be everything, Father God. Live through me in every way. Be everything, Father. If there's anything going on in my life that you're not a part of, Father God, remove it. Hallelujah. Remove it, Father. And I ask this, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, and all of God's beloved said, Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. And look at that happy face. Amen. That was perfect timing. Praise God. And I pray in Jesus' name that we're always happy. Rejoice. Amen. Glory to God. The funny thing is that I hear people say to me, you say rejoice, you say be happy, don't be crunchy and all that stuff. But you know what, sometimes you just can't help it because you have a bad day. Will the bad day define you? Or does Lord Jesus Christ define you? This is the message Holy Spirit wants to get across to this entire world. Right? Does all this chaos define you? Huh? Does no toilet paper on the shelves define you? Come on, let's be real now. Does it consume you and you're just going cray cray? Or does Lord Jesus Christ define you? And you truly know that I am God's beloved child. He's my father and he won't let me go. Hallelujah. And it's in that anointing when you could rest assured. Oh my goodness. You know that song? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. That's so all Holy Spirit, I tell you right now, glory to God. That's all he wants. Worship the name above every name, Lord Jesus Christ, regardless of what you're going through. Listen, family, whatever it is, I'm going to tell you, nothing can stop our God. All he is asking of you as his beloved, let me in. Right? Let me in. And glory to God, I know we just got on our knees. I know. Listen, Holy Spirit, so happy right now. His fire, his anointing, like an ocean right now, is just flowing through you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's move on. Praise God. We're going to pick up in Ephesians 6, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Remember, our struggle is not against each other. We are the church of Christ. Amen. We are God's beloved children. Let's stop backbiting and talking bad about one another. Right? Wolves in sheep clothing. Forget about them. Praise God. We don't feed wolves anyway. So guess what? They're going to starve and go away or they're just going to die. Stop paying attention to all that garbage. It's all the enemy. God's saying, we're not the enemy. Hear me now. This is not our struggle. It's not supposed to be our struggle. We're supposed to love one another, knowing that we are unified through the anointing of Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That we are one body in Lord Jesus Christ. That we serve Almighty God. And that we look at each other. And you can already see, my brother, my sister, hallelujah, glory to you, Father God. Hallelujah. And God says this. It's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil. Now isn't this interesting? Now we're getting into the heavenly realms. Remember what we discussed, right? I'll show this picture right here for you. What an awesome picture, amen? That in the heavenly realms right now, there's just an all-out war. You need to know this. I know this, this world right here is chaos, right? But I'm going to tell you right now, in the second heaven, there is a war breaking off. Remember, we have the atmosphere, the heavenly realm, right? Then we have second and third, right? I'm going to tell you this right now. Listen, what God is trying to get through in his church is stop being focused on what's happening here. When we learn to submit to Holy Spirit, there is a spiritual war taking place right now. And when God needs, yes, what God needs from us as his children is intimacy with him. Is his light shining through us, right? Could you imagine, 
You have, you have God's light shining through you 100%, right? I mean, you're talking about like the brightest light that, that, you know, like the sun just coming out of you. But why in the world would you want to put something to cover that? When you know that it's that very light that not only attracts all of heaven and all the angels, but it's the very light too that exposes the enemy and extinguishes and cuts the head off of every demonic foul thing. You wouldn't. You wouldn't want to cover that. But this is the thing that God is exposing right now. Is that if we live this life, this vapor of a life, it's over just like that. And we don't know how to submit. We are actually, through pride, disobedience, crunchiness, covering His light. We're actually hurting the Holy Spirit. And do you think, as you see the beam of light coming down and attacking all the forces of the enemy, because this is an all-out war now, my question to you, church family, is are we, are we winning this fight in a spiritual warfare? Or are we just becoming religious with God saying, well, I know Jesus, but I don't need to do nothing. I don't need to worship. I don't need to go to church. I don't need a fellowship. As long as I know Jesus, I'm good. Listen, that's between you and God. I'm not judging you. But remember how Holy Spirit anointing, say it with me, anointing. Anointing. Holy Spirit right now is saying, come on church, rise up. Hallelujah. Let my light shine. And watch the glory of God go before us. And watch what God will do for you in Jesus' name. Amen? So I love as far as this picture. Because this is what, if you see that X flashing right there, this is what the enemy wants to attack in our three-part being. Hear me now. If the enemy can attack you from submitting or surrendering, next, he will attack your very God-purchased identity. Explain, Brother Joey. I'm about to. Hallelujah. If the enemy can attack your worship life where you don't want to worship God, right there, right there, it's, it's just hand in hand, right there. If the enemy can attack your worship life, the enemy has attacked your identity. Well, what do you mean, Brother Joey? If the enemy attacks your worship life, he has infiltrated your identity, and now in your heart, these things are going to take place. Your security is no longer. You don't have any more peace. You're always in worry, anxiety. You're always just in an emotional roller coaster. You are in chaos and in torment. Why? Because it's taking place on the inside of the holy of holies. And it all starts from being rebellious in pride. Oh my goodness. May I ask you? If you are someone that all you do is criticize, judge, talk bad, gossip about somebody or someone, and you think that you are right, that you have the right to do it, God is calling out to you right now. Say, can enough be enough? Because what you are doing is you are hurting God Almighty in you. The darkness in you has got so bad that it's trying to consume you from the inside. And then what takes place? Remember, we discussed here the worship life is done. Now, God of hope. Remember, who is God of hope? Hallelujah, say his name. Holy Spirit. Now the God of hope with all this going on, of course God can just, like that. Yes, I just snapped my fingers. Like that, get rid of it all. But he needs submission from a child of God to say, Lord, forgive me. Oh my goodness, Father, I said things I wasn't supposed to say. Father, I went down this season and it was never your intention. I did it out of spite, out of anger. I did it because somebody said something that I didn't agree with. Father, that doesn't matter anymore. Because all I agree and know right now is Jesus Christ is Lord and Holy Spirit have your way. Amen. So hope starts to get filled. You're not filled no more. Why? You're punching holes in your bucket. And the joy, uh -uh. 
And what happens? The spirit man, the spirit man is just no longer. And this right here that you see on the screen is what the devil wants. For your soul and your emotions and your flesh and your body to be in complete disobedience to Holy Spirit. To just live your life the way you think you should live it. And I'll tell you right now, family, is it worth it? Is it worth it? You see, in the name of Jesus, I am so thankful that I am surrounded by brothers and sisters that they cherish and protect Holy Spirit in them. And the glory of God is this, is that God knows we can't even control sometimes of what we see because we live in this, in this world. And the beauty of God is that He already knows what you've done, Saul, but He's expecting the anointing to kick in and repentance to come His way. And it's in that repentance where He has blessing after blessing lined up for you. And it's an exchange. It's an exchange. Because that's all our Father wanted from the very get-go was that relationship between a child and a perfect father. When you come to Him and say, Daddy, I miss Daddy, I messed up. You can't even get it out of your mouth. You're crying. You're dirty. And he just, he just picks you up and swings you around and says, I love you so much. And twah, gives you a big kiss and will put you down. And you have all these blessings. Hallelujah. That's all God wants. Amen. Romans 14, verse 16. Therefore, it's therefore reason. Do not let what you know is good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking but of righteousness, peace, and joy, say with me, in the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. Let us therefore, it's therefore reason, make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Can I get a hallelujah? You know, that's one thing that I just want to be obedient. Holy Spirit said, I can say it right now, and I'm just going to say it, that God is so happy with the order that he has on Open Arms Community Church. That God is so happy that he has anointed elders and deacons that, that, that oversee the church and that have the fear of agape in them. And that they, they, they do things based on what God says to do. And glory to God, I am so thankful for that because that is unification of Holy Spirit. And that is how the presence of God is blessed within us as the temple of God. Say it with me, I am a temple of God. Say it with me, I am a beloved child of God. Hallelujah, say it with me, Jesus Christ is Lord. Say it with me, Holy Spirit is God. Say it with me, Father God, you are a good and perfect Father. Amen? Give God praise. Hallelujah. So when we live this way, we expect... Hallelujah, gooder and gooder, right? It's not boasting or bragging or prideful boasting, no. It's the focus in the Lord Jesus Christ and in that intimacy and worship, you know, hallelujah, that God's presence just overwhelms you. And you want nothing more than being overwhelmed that way, hallelujah. I mean, it's just, even as I look at you on, on, on this camera right now, you just... <laughs> You're just so excited and so happy, amen? And that's who Holy Spirit is. When you experience this intimacy and worship with God, hallelujah, you realize that, oh my goodness, I am going to continue to submit and repent to my God because this enemy is trying to deceive me and trying to trip me up in being rebellious and trying to make another brother or sister stumble. Look at this in verse 20. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or to do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. Beloved church family, please, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, anyone who has something to say to you about you, about your church, about your pastors, about your leadership. Don't even defend it. You just let them know God loves you. Agape is overflowing. You want to come?
come and worship with us, just come. Amen? God bless you. But, but I, the reason why the enemy wants you to be a part of that conversation, you could have every intention, every intention to be right, but guess what God teaches us right now in this very moment? You could be 100% right, but your actions could be 100% wrong. How is that possible, Brother Joey? Holy Spirit said, and we choose to be rebellious sometimes and say things in disobedience, and God says, right? And that's when we drop on our knees. Hallelujah. So whatever you believe about these things, keep, say it with me, keep between yourself and God. Let's say that again together as a church body. Keep between yourself and God. Hallelujah. Blessed is the one. Oh, come on now. Holy Spirit, thank you. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself, condemn herself by what he or she approves. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. So as we move forward, let us draw near to God in complete surrender and submission. Just like that glorious day when we called on Lord Jesus to save us. Amen. Listen, there's many of us right now that hear this message. And right there, Holy Spirit convicted you and said, that's where I want us. That's where I want us. You knew you cried out to me when you, you had nothing in the bank. You cried out to me when you were, you were just heavy in addiction. You cried out to me when you had no place to go. You cried out to me when you was homeless. You cried out to me when, when he was going to leave you. You cried out to me when he was going through that divorce. See, right there, Holy Spirit is saying, I'm here. Right here. And God is saying, will you give it all? Will you submit to me? Amen. And this is exposing the thief and his deceptions. Amen. And for those of you who, uh, who want to be a blessing and give financially, we thank you for it. We are, you know, we are just uh, trusting God and just believing God for a miracle. Um, we are so thankful because Holy Spirit put together our, our little bitty website, oacchurch.com. And uh, at oacchurch.com, there's an offering page there. And please, God leads you to, please help us. Amen. We know that God provides. Yes, hallelujah. God provides and God blesses us in the overflow. And in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, he will bless every seed that you have sown into the kingdom of God a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so, so much, Lord Jesus Christ, for it's all about you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your salvation. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your authority. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your agape. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your victory. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, thank you that you have taught us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your anointing, that you refresh in our souls, Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now that your anointing from within overflows. And Heavenly Father, that anything that we have done in the past, we are washed clean through your blood. And Heavenly Father, we plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ, over ourselves, over our homes, over our family, our churches, our community, over this whole world, Father, Forgive us. Forgive us, Father God. And we are so thankful, Father, that you are coming for us soon. Father, we know it. We can feel it in our bones. And Father God, I thank you that we choose to rejoice because the perfect work was already done through Christ our Lord. And Lord Jesus, we're so grateful that as you're seated at the throne of mercy and grace, that as all the 24 elders just worship around you, as the creatures in the middle of your throne, that Heavenly Father, we are right there right now, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Father, I thank you. Bless those, Father God, who give, and bless those, Father, who, who maybe can't right now. But Father, you know the heart, and I just thank you so much that you bless us, Father God, in the overflow in everything, Father, in everything. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. And all God's beloved said, amen. God bless you guys. We love you so much. Can't even express it. We just love you so, so much.
And we just thank God for your anointing. Let's be a blessing to God first, hallelujah. And let's just let that overflow just keep on running over like a mighty ocean. Amen. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. God bless you guys. Love you. Don't be crunchy. And yes, it gets gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good. Oh, I miss you guys. Love you all so much. God bless you guys.